Hi everyone and welcome to my floss tube channel, Thread the Needle. My name is Vani and I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, welcome. This is a floss tube channel for people to share their love for uh, needleworks. And my passion is cross stitching. So I hope you get to watch and enjoy something that uh, you like here today. For those of you who are returning, uh, returning subscribers, thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy my update for today. So I have a few works in progresses to show you, and I have some, I think I'm gonna talk about some plans for the future, and I have a new stitching tool that I am excited to share with you. So let's begin. So over the last two weeks, I have been working tirelessly on making some good progress on a few projects and two of them I'm very near the end and that makes me so excited because that means that I can finish them they are done and maybe I can start another one so let's start um, I have to begin with it's going to be world travel bookshelf I'm going to show you an update on that one now, it's going to be a little tricky to show you the picture uh, of what it's going to look like uh, before. I need to find a different way to do this. Um, yeah, let's see. I've got this here on my tablet, so there's going to be a bit of a glare, so I'm going to find the best way to show you how. So, okay, so here is what this is. Let's go. Okay, so I am working on this top shelf up here. I decided, so this is where I'm working right now. I've got all of this done and I'm working in this area right here. So now that you've seen the full piece, here's how I'll explain to you what my plan is for World Travel Bookshelf. Seeing as how it was such a huge project, I didn't want it to become something that I would be thinking to myself, you are never gonna get this done because then it would kind of um, demotivate me to work on it. So I wanted a way to enjoy the stitch while I'm doing it. So I decided to separate those shelves, those four shelves that you saw in the picture and stitch them individually as a, um, as a shelf by themselves. So I started with the upper shelf, which started with an image. I won't even show you how much material I have here. You'll you'll just get a little scared. <laughs> so um, I started with the upper left-hand corner and I have been just in awe of the amount of detail that has come through. All my designs, all my charts are um, that I'm going to show you today for sure are Heaven and Earth designs, um, charted by Heaven and Earth designs. So the artist for this piece is Amy Stewart. And so I started the first shelf, and this is how much I have done. All right, so let's see if I can show you this here. So this is how much I have done, and it's it's just so fun to work on. There's every time I do a little section, there's so much detail that comes through. So you can tell I was, I think the last time I had stopped in this column and I started working in this column. So you can see there, uh, and really this is how far away the piece is gonna be once it's framed. So this is how much I have done so far. It's so much fun to work on the colors, the details and the surprise because I don't really look at the finished picture very often, uh, only when I'm showing it to you really. So I don't really know off by heart what's gonna come up next. So it's always nice to, while you're working on it, kind of get a little surprise about, oh, that's what it is. And you don't really realize what it is you're working on until you take a step back and put the piece up there and like, oh, so that's what all those colors were for. So this piece again, is stitched on 25 count, uh, one over one full crosses. So it's turning out really well and I think I'm gonna enjoy the journey on this one. So next up, let's see what I have. 
Next up is, I got picked for me by my random uh, project picking app, um, Autumn Owl Trio. This is in my UFO pile. So for those of you who don't know, UFO means unfinished object. So I'm gonna first show you what the finished piece is going to look like. Okay, so here it is. So this is the Autumn Owl Trio. Three cute, very, very cute little owls. I'm gonna even say that that's a Starbucks cup that it's holding. That owl is one of my favorite colors, that like mauvey purple color. And then of course the teal and then this one, I mean, they're just so adorable. Now, you will notice that there is a lot, a lot of orange of nothingness up here. And I just could not bring myself to do all that. So what I did was once I purchased the chart, I kind of figured out where the stitches stopped for the tops of their heads. And I went up a few rows and cut off all that orange that I didn't want to stitch. So you'll notice this is where, so this one, I don't have a before picture because it's a UFO and it was such a long time ago that I last picked it up that uh, I don't have a UFO. So I'm going to cover up with my hand what I had stitched on and I'll just show you what a before picture would have looked like. Okay. Okay. So here, isn't that just so sweet? So here's how much I had before Autumn Owl Trio got put in my uh, UFO pile. And here you can see the top of the picture of how much orange I kept and how much orange I cut off. So if you look closer, you can tell there's two different shades of orange, the lighter and the darker. So I think I cut it off at a spot where I felt that the light orange was stopping and then the dark was starting and the dark orange was all the way up to at least this much higher. So I knew this would never get done if I had that much orange to do. So I decided to cut off the top of the project and continue on with um, the parts that I had. So. Again, still stitching orange on orange on orange can get a little tedious, so I didn't get a whole lot done, but I'm still happy that I got a little bit done on a, a UFO. So here is how much I got done. So I finished the this section right here and a little bit over here. So exciting to see if this will end up um, in my stitching order Again, so this is stitched on 22 count, two over one, full crosses. So again, this is Autumn Owl Trio, and it kind of has a really good feel to it. it it's going, fall going into winter now for us, and we actually had our first really significant snowfall this weekend. It was like 15 centimeters of snow. Everything was so white and beautiful. Uh, not so fun to shovel, but still, it all looked great. Um, we're starting to look very Christmassy out there. So this is my Autumn Owl Trio and I'm just loving it. All right, on to the next project. Um, let's see, next, so I'm gonna save that one to show you last. Let's move on to QS Peridot or Peridot. I don't know how people like to pronounce it. I call it Peridot. It is the August birthstone, and uh, I am planning on stitching all the 12 birthstones. Um, the series of 12 birthstones, again, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Uh, the 12 series birthstones were uh, designed by Rachel Anderson, one of my favorite uh, artists there on the Heaven and Earth Designs um, website. And she created this uh, birthstone series, and it is a uh, young lady in, dressed in the colors of that birthstone, surrounded by the colors of the birthstone, and they all have wings. So it's very, very beautiful. So here she is. This is what she's going to look like when she's done. Very, very pretty. So 
uh, August is actually my birthstone and my daughter's birthstone. We're both August babies. Uh, and my sister, she's also an August baby. I get confused sometimes with the birthstone versus your birth sign. So I'm a Leo, but my daughter and my sister are Virgos because they were born later in August. So here's how much I have done on her. Um, let's see. I think the last time that I showed you Peridot, QS Peridot, I just had um, maybe a little bit of this area done. So her, the wings is filling out a little bit more here, more fuller. And I think this is where her dress is starting. So it's nice. And I still have these hanging threads from my parking attempt in the page above. So we'll, we'll finish those when we finally get to that part. But it's looking great. And I'm going to open her up because the detail in this one is also so, so, so nice. The detail in, in all of these always surprises me. I don't know. Oh, sorry about that clatter. That was my Q-snap falling on the ground. But I don't know why it surprises me with the, the detail in these pieces because I should know better. I know how good it is and I know what it's going to come out like because Heaven Earth Designs does such a good job of charting all these projects. Uh, there should be nothing to be surprised about. But here she is. She's very fairly close to, I'm gonna, there we go. Isn't that so nice? So you can even, yeah. I mean, I just love looking at her. She's just so pretty and you, when you look closer, you can't, it just looks like a bunch of black, black smudges on her face. But when, when you're just a little bit further back, it looks like these beautiful eyelashes and then a little bit of color on her, on her lips and then a little butterfly and the ring. She's wearing a peridot birthstone ring. Like, look at the detail in that hand. Like the fingers and the knuckles. I think it's just... It's just fabulous. And then look at this. The way that they've got it charted, the ringlets in her hair. Like, I mean, come on. It doesn't get better than that. So that's, that's pretty fantastic. That's one of my favorite pieces. So I don't think I'll finish it this year, but I'm hoping, hoping that soon I will get a finish for this one. I've got just this much. So I think... After her dress, which I think is pretty detail-oriented because I think there's a lot of design in her dress, and then we've got the arm. The rest of this is actually easy stitching, so I'm hoping that it shouldn't take me too long once I get past the dress. So that's my wish for next year, to early next year, to get another finish with this one. And maybe I'll get it framed, and I don't know, maybe I'll give it to my daughter for her birthday, which is not for a few months, or maybe I'll keep it for myself. Now, lastly, I have been working on this piece um, for a very long time now, and it used to be in my UFO pile, and then I took it out, and I have been stitching on it fairly frequently, and it has been progressing very, very nicely. So again, I, because I forget to take these before pictures before I pick them up, I, I, I hardly ever have a before picture for you. So again, I'm going to cover up what, how much I have stitched on so far. Maybe I'll use something to cover it up so it's easier to hold. There we go. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cover up the section that I've stitched on and show you what I had done before. So this is SK Winter Wings. And this is how much I had done previously. And there wasn't much left to do. So I'm gonna fold this back down so I can hold it properly and show you how much I have done. So as you can see, we're working on her dress. And this is how much I got done. So I have reached the bottom right? The bottom is just there. 
It is so close and I am dying to finish this one. So I think I'm going to make this one a focus piece for the next two weeks along with my other stitches. I think um, I'll kind of try and I, I really want to finish this one. I am super excited. Just have this area here to do and I really want to get her finished because I mean, come on. She's gorge. Absolutely beautiful. I love her. And I have plans for her. Once she is all stitched, I'm not going to frame this one right away. And I'll tell you why. A few years ago, Heaven and Earth Designs had a, a bulletin board where they hosted a mystery cell. So the chart that I selected was called Enchanted Garden. And it was a similar pattern to this one in that it was long and narrow and it had a lady in it and it was super pretty, just like this. I stitched it, I completed it, and then I put it away. Since then, we have moved a couple of times. We have moved provinces, so we've moved to the mainland and we've moved back home here to Newfoundland. And I have searched high and low and I cannot for the life of me find that piece. And it makes me so sad because it was a finish and it was beautiful. However, I still have the chart, thankfully, and I think I'm gonna start it again. So once I finish, SK Winter Wings. As its companion, I'm going to stitch the other lady. So I don't have a picture of it now. So in my next video, I will show you more of my future stitching plans um, for the following few months. Maybe I will find her again. Maybe she's not lost. She's just misplaced. But I didn't want to dwell on it too much. And because it was just making me sad that I had this finished project and it was when, when you stitch these full coverage pieces, so much time and so much effort goes into them that when something like this happens, it's, it's a little bit devastating that you don't know where the, what, what happened to it. So I'm not going to dwell on it. I'm just going to look at it as an opportunity to stitch it again. So I'm going to prepare myself to get everything to try and match it in, in size and everything so that once both of these ladies are done, they can be framed together. All right. In the meantime, uh, I have sent two projects to be framed. Um, I think I'm expecting to get a call from the framers. I went to Michael's. I have had only good things from my Michael's framers. And so I expect a call maybe in a week to 10 days that they're going to be ready and I can go pick them up. I sent QS Amethyst, which is a sister of the QS Peridot uh, birthstone. So previous to this, I already had completed and framed QS Garnet. Um, and so now Amethyst is in the framers and Peridot is almost done. So that's three birthstones. Once Peridot is done, then I'll see which, um, which one I want to pick up next. Uh, I've got 12 of them, so I've got quite the selection to pick from. Let's see. Uh, and what else was at the framers? Oh, yes. Uh, QS Sunny. Um, so that one, I actually I can't wait to get that one back because I had a lot of bold colors in it. So I, I hope I picked the correct matting colors and um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm excited to get those two back. And... I think that once I get this uh, winter wings done and then my enchanted garden um, missing piece restitched, I think they will look nice side by side. And I might put, because QS Sunny is also a linear project, I might put the, that one in the middle. Sorry, there's fluff flying around from the Christmas tree, I think. Um, I might put all three of them on the wall next to each other or definitely the two ladies together and maybe another piece in, in the middle. But that is thinking 
way far advanced in the future. I don't even have it stitched and completed and I don't even have this one framed or completed yet. But uh, if I concentrate on this, I think I can get it done before my next video and have a finished SK Winter Wings to show you and that makes me super excited. So I can't wait. So that is my work in progresses and a little snippet of what I have planned for the future. Um, I think in my next video, I'm going to actually, between now and then, I'm gonna actually sit down and kind of review how things are going and decide what my plan of action is for the new year for 2021. I can't believe 2021 is almost here. And um, because 2020 has been quite a ride, so it's nice, um, it'll be nice to get a fresh start next year uh, on life. Um, so looking forward to it. So I'll have more details once I wrap my head around what it is I wanna do in the next uh, year of stitching. And one more thing that I wanted to show you today is, so I, like many of you, watch Floss Tube. So I follow quite a number of people. Um, and sometimes I'll watch the most recent videos of a particular FlossTube channel that has been uploaded. And sometimes I will, um, if I like a particular one, then I'll wanna catch up. So I'll start from the very beginning of their first video throughout the channel. So I stumbled upon a group of ladies um, who stitch together and are in a group together and they live in the same area. So they decided to have a floss tube channel together and um, it's the Steel City Stitchers. They're so much fun to watch. They have such a good energy about them and just so much fun to watch. And I started, like I said, I started watching their videos from the very beginning. So I think I'm only on like, gosh, video number, floss tube number like 11 or 12, or something of them. So I'm far back into the past. They're already on Floss Tube episode number 50 plus. So uh, on one of those earlier videos, they had shown a, um, a reading light that one of them had purchased and to help them stitch. And I was like, oh my God, I, I, I always knew these reading lights were out there. When I'm stitching, I have a clamp on light that I clamp onto my frame and then I can bend the light towards my stitching. And that's what I usually use. Or if I'm sitting in my stitching chair, I have one of those large floor OTT lights that I can shine onto my stitching while I'm working. Um, but this one is great for if I'm stitching in bed and I don't wanna, because sometimes on these smaller projects, especially like this one, the light clamp and then the light can get a little bit heavy. And with these little ones, I don't stitch two-handed because they're just so tiny and it's a little bit cumbersome to try and stitch double-handed. So I only stitch with the one hand. And so I'll have the light clamped on here and then the light facing my stitching, but it makes it a little bit that much heavier. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but it, 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 it does, it makes a difference. So then I found this little doodad that they actually spoke about in the Steel City, Steel City Stitchers. It's just a, basically a book light. It's meant for reading, but why can't we use it for stitching? And when this week, a close friend of mine who I work with um, gifted it to me for Christmas and she didn't know anything about this, anything that I had even thought about uh, getting this and when I opened it I was like oh my god how did you know this is exactly what I wanted and I couldn't be happier so basically it just goes around your neck and now I'm going to tell you this we may be lucky and it might work right away it might not these the on off buttons on this are a little bit tricky so I can't tell when they work how much pressure to put on it and it doesn't want to work for me now oh ooh, look there it is whoa that's shining right bright in your eyes Okay, so you can see, and then this one too. And you know what? When they were also talking about it on their video, they said the same thing, that one side was a little finicky. And it seems to be doing that for me too. And I, and I tried it before I started my video. And I don't know. So if anyone has a tip on why it's being like this, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, look, 
There you go. Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to try not to shine it right into the camera, but basically you can see, and it's it's great. It gives off a lot of light. So I'm going to turn it off now so that it's not shining bright into your camera or into my eyes as I do this. Oh, look, it's a lot easier to turn off than it was on. But <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so that's a fun little new tool that I can use for my stitching. It's, um, it's super cool. I am really enjoying it. Little hands-free tools for stitching never hurt uh, anybody. It's uh, so much fun. So I think that's everything that I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much for all the comments and the likes that you, everyone is leaving me. I really appreciate it. And it, uh, it really makes me happy to see the response that I'm getting to these videos. And it makes me um, so happy that you're enjoying what I'm putting out there. Um, so please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends um, that there's someone here who just wants to talk about stitching. And who doesn't? I love talking about stitching. And I love talking about full coverage cross stitching. Uh, I have dabbled in the non-full coverages. I have a project in mind. I know, um, maybe it was a few weeks ago now, I dabbled in trying a non-full coverage project. Didn't get very far with it. And luckily it didn't come up in my project wheel. I think it's gonna end up being in a, my UFO pile or maybe my never finish it pile. Um, I just couldn't get into it. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna get, get it done. It was just a non-full coverage piece of um, tiny little motifs, I'm going to call them. Um, and it was part of a mystery Christmas cell and I just couldn't get into it. But I think I have an idea for another project that involves some non full coverage, but until I sort out the details, I don't want to tell you about it. And, um, yeah, I'd rather know what I'm talking about before I talk about it. But yeah, so all of my pieces at the moment that I want to work on, that I am working on, is full coverage pieces. So if you like full coverage cross stitch, this is the place to be. So I am so happy to share all of this with you. And I hope there was something for you to take away from this video or that you just like and enjoy seeing my progress on my project because I love sharing them. So thank you so much for joining me today on Thread the Needle. My name is Ivani. Happy stitching. Bye now.